Welcome to Manufacturing Processes, Machining and Machine Tools Lectures by Prof. Joy G. Tughosh. This is the 19th lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on broaching and finishing processes. He will be discussing about broaching, broaching tools, broaching versus shaping, broaching processes, broaching nomenclature, broaching tool geometry, push or pull broaching, internal or external broaching. Types of broaching machines, turn broaching, continuous surface or chain broaching, advantages and limitations of broaching, honing, lapping, buffing, super finishing, electroplating. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we will be discussing about broaching and some uh, finishing operations or finishing processes. So let's start with the discussions. So we'll start with broaching. Broaching is a machining process which is very similar to that of uh, shaping process. Uh, just like shaping process here, the tool reciprocates over the workpiece and removes material. However, the similarity ends there. Uh, in broaching process, we use a tool which we call a broach. This broach uh, is a multi-point cutting tool that means it's a multiple cutting edges or multiple teeth rather. Uh, which removes a part of the material from the workpiece and this broach tool is a custom designed tool to complete the work or finish machine the work in one pass so that is the beauty of broaching in this broaching process or broaching uh, method the entire workpiece is completed in a single stroke of the tool and what is the tool tool is the broach and this broach is a custom tool for that particular job that is being machined. And the teeth are designed and placed in a particular position on the tool to remove a predetermined amount of material from a predetermined place in the workpiece. So broaching tool has roughing teeth semi finishing teeth and finishing teeth all in one tool now what are the op jobs that can be performed by broaching broaching can produce flat surfaces it can produce holes of different cross section not only circular it can produce a square cross section hole it can produce a triangular cross sectional hole it can produce a rectangular cross sectional hole it can produce a hexagonal cross sectional hole star shaped cross sectional hole so different types of shapes can be produced uh, different types of cross sectional shapes of holes can be produced by broaching processes it can machine external surfaces as well as internal surfaces uh, it can produce keyways it can produce teeth of internal gears or internal gear teeth can be produced by broaching process <clears throat> so these are some of the operations that can be done by a broaching tool broaching tool is normally made of uh, high speed steel and sometimes it is coated with uh, titanium nitride and when machining certain kind of forged steel and steel alloys we may use cemented carbide insert as the teeth of the broach tool but normally it is high speed steel and sometimes it is coated with titanium nitride. Broacher, broaching gives a good surface finish and high dimensional accuracy. It's very important aspect of broaching is that the surface finish and the dimensional accuracy is achieved. And this happens because we design it in this way. The skill of the operator is inbuilt in the tool. That means the tool is designed in such a way to obtain a good surface finish and high dimensional accuracy. And the machine that is used or machine on which the broach is mounted is relatively a simple machine requiring only reciprocating motion. And that reciprocating motion 
may be uh, horizontal or it may be vertical. Broaching can be two types, it can be pushed or pulled. The tool is pulled, then it is called pull broaching. If it is pushed, it is called push broaching. One thing very important in broaching is that broaching moves in straight line. So there should not be any obstruction during in the path of the machining. So that is a limitation of broaching. We will be discussing the limitations later. Uh, so this is a, how a internal broaching looks like. This is a basically a cylindrical hole uh, making broaching tool. You can see the red teeth are all roughing teeth. The yellows one are the semi finishing and the green one are the finishing teeth. Each the heights are progressive in nature. The heights are progressive in nature and the distance between each teeth is varies from roughing teeth to semi finishing to finishing. See the height or alternate teeth is much more in the roughing teeth because it removes much more volume of material and the space between alternate teeth is also more in roughing because the volume of material removed is more. Whereas in roughing teeth the uh, space between alternate teeth is slightly less. So that means basically the pitch is uh, less in case of uh, finishing teeth whereas the pitch is more in case of roughing teeth and also the height difference between the alternate teeth are more in roughing teeth. That means basically you can say the feed is more in roughing and the feed is less in broaching. See all these are designed and the length is designed to remove predetermined volume of material and each teeth removes a certain volume of material. So the summation of all the volume of material removed by each teeth is equal to total volume removed. And uh, is this particular tool is a pull, uh, pull uh, brooch. Here you can see the pull end that is the shank on shank. There is the pull end which will be gripped and will be pulled by the machine through a starting hole. There should be a starting hole in case of internal broaching. There should be a starting hole from the starting hole and the starting hole diameter should be equal to the uh, this front pilot diameter. Okay, And additional volume of material is removed. Now remember, broaching is not used to remove maximum volume of material. It is removed to, uh, it is used to remove small volume of material and achieve good surface finish and high dimensional accuracy. That is the importance of broaching. As I have said, broaching is very similar to shaping. Let's see the differences between broaching and shaping. Uh, so I have included these differences so that uh, the concept of broaching is clear to you and with respect to the shaping, which you have already studied, which you can relate it to the shaping. Tool, uh, in broaching, the tool has multiple teeth. Okay, whereas in shaping, we use the tool, which is basically a single point cutting tool. The entire work in broaching is completed in one pass, whereas in normally in shaping, the entire work requires multiple passes. And feed, okay, the feed in broaching is a difference of height between the succeed teeth. Whereas in shaping or planing, the feed is determined by the relative movement between the tool and the workpiece between each pass. In broaching, uh, you can perform various types of internal and external machining processes such as producing flat surfaces, producing holes of different cross section, cutting keyways uh, and internal gears, teeth of internal gears. Whereas shaping is basically used for producing flat surfaces which are external as well as slots and keyways. The broaching tool may be pushed or pulled. In shaping, we know the tool is always pushed by the ram. So these are the some of the difference between broaching and shaping. We will discuss the geometry of a broach tool. The first important point is the uh, this is see this is the entire overall length of the tool. The overall length is designed uh, to remove a specific volume of material from the workpiece, and each tool each teeth will remove a certain specific volume. The summation of all this volume will be equal to the total volume of material which is designed to be removed. So this is a custom made tool. This is a custom made tool designed to remove specific volume of material and each teeth is designed to remove a small amount of material from the workpiece. Now here this part is called the sank. Sank is that part of a tool in any tool which is held uh, which is gripped and held and to be driven. So this is held, this is a pull brooch, so it, it will be gripped here and it will put like this in this direction, in this direction, okay. Now, and one important point, this is the front pilot. Front pilot is basically 
uh, means the maintains the alignment of the tool with the starting hole. So this is equal to the almost equal to the or slightly less than this starting hole, uh, and it maintains the alignment of the tool with the starting hole. And then we have the rear pilot. The rear pilot is equal to the diameter, almost equal to the diameter of the finished hole. It is almost equal to the diameter of the finished hole. We are talking about internal broaching process. So I am talking hole, I am talking in terms of hole. It may be a flat surface also, but in, in case of hole, this geometry, this is equal to the diameter of the finished hole. And in between you have the uh, cutting teeth. <coughs> and you have the chip gullet the chip gullets uh, are round rounded portion or filleted portion at the root now this is done so that the chip if you are machining ductile material it will be curled and you can accommodate large volume of material so this curling is required because it will curl and large volume of material will be required particularly when you are machining a ductile material when you are machining a metal material obviously you have small chips which is to be accommodated between the alternate teeth and this space between alternate teeth is also designed it is designed in such a way that it should it should accommodate the volume of material removed by this teeth so this will, will be accommodated here the volume of material removed by this teeth will be accommodated here so the chip this gullet uh, and the space between alternate teeth is designed in a such a way that to accommodate the volume of material that is being removed and another important aspect in particularly in internal broaching or cylindrical broaching is that there is a chip breaker. The chip breaker is basically uh, very important and the cutting teeth has okay this these are all chip breakers. The chip breakers are important on a broaching tool to eliminate chip packing <laughs> otherwise it may lead to the uh, breaking of the tool. So chip breakers are important and you have to gallop chip load. Chip load is also important. So the chip load is a designed chip load. That means uh, we know the amount of load that will be acting on each individual teeth. And in each individual teeth and the gullet and the space is designed to take that particular load. <clears throat> okay, as I have said, Broaching tool can be so you can see a different cross sectional broach tool. So it's a hexagonal broach tool. So it can be pushed, it can be pulled. Pull broaches are pulled either up or it can be down or horizontal across the workpiece. And it's always by a machine, it is not done manually. So broaching tool is adapted in a machine, but the machine is simple compared to that of other complicated machines. Automobile cylinder blocks and heads are often faced flat by the broaching method. So you can see the internal broaching, you can see different cross section uh, that can be generated by a broaching tool. Okay, type of broaching machines. I will not be delving on the uh, nitty gritty of different machines, but I will just go through it. So what type of broaching machines are available? First is the manual one that is broaching press, it is mainly used for to remove a small material mainly cutting keyways in gears etc etc so you can see the this is the broach tool and you manually press it and this is to basically it's cutting a keyway in a gear and you have vertical broaching machines in vertical broaching machines uh, it can be of various types the first one is vertical table up where the table moves the broach tool remains stationary or uh, let me internal pull up for internal broaching you can pull it up in up direction or pull it down in down direction uh, vert <coughs> vertical internal push down, you can push it down and surface broaching, vertical surface broaching, it will be surface broaching the vertic in vertical plane. So this is a vertical broaching machine and you have horizontal broaching machine, horizontal internal broaching machines are there and horizontal surface broaching machines are there. Again it can be push type, pull type. Okay, this is much more interesting. Uh, <clears throat> here we don't move the broach. Broach is held by a backup plate stationary, so that there is no question of returning of the uh, broach tool here. And multiple workpieces are moved by chain conveyor system. By chain conveyor system, so it is moved at a specific speed, and the broach tool remains stationary as it passes 
the broach tool the work is finished and once it is finished it is dropped here uh, by centrifugal force and it will be uh, sorry it will be unloaded here for, uh, and it will be taken out chips will be carried away by a conveyor so this is continuous surface or chain broaching machines another is a turn broaching in turn broaching i'll show you with an example the broaching tool rotates the broaching tool rotates about the workpiece so this is the workpiece this is a crankshaft you can see this is the crankshaft and this is the huge broach tool you can see the dimension in comparison with the crankshaft engine crankshaft uh, you can see this is the roughing teeth this is the finishing teeth and in a one complete turn it will be finished the entire workpiece will be finished machined so different types of broaching we have discussed so what are the advantages of broaching the rate of production is very high that is one advantage and entire job is completed in one pass the skill of the operator is inbuilt in the broaching tool so the operator does not re re need much skill high accuracy as i have said high accuracy and dimension <coughs> high accuracy and high surface finish are possible because you are designing it in such a way the process can be either internal or external cutting fluid can be applied uh, in a suitable way because the nature of the operation and the tool and the teeth is that it tends to drag the cutting fluid in between the tool and the workpiece as a result better uh, <coughs> better application of the fluid happens broaching machines are simple uh, and only reciprocation motion is required for cutting so these are the advantages of broaching and some limitations are there the tool cost is high because we are custom making the tool for a particular job and until and unless that is required in high volume the cost cannot be justified and of course if the workpiece size is very large it is very the tool will be the broach tool will be uh, very 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 large and it is difficult <coughs> to produce such kind of broach surface to be broach cannot have any kind of obstruction because you are moving in a straight line broaching cannot be used for removal of large volume of material and of course broaching is moving at a high speed and the workpiece should be capable of being held rigidly that means basically means thin and fragile workpieces are difficult to broach so with broaching uh, we are finished with this uh, on broaching so now we'll be discussing honing the various finishing operations one of the most uh, important finishing operation is honing what is honing honing is a basically a process of uh, correcting small geometrical inaccuracies in a hole or correcting out of roundness correction of small amount of taper slight axial distortion and the dimensional accuracy can be increased by a honing tool so what is this honing tool the honing tool consists of a set of aluminum oxide or silicon carbide uh, tool uh, called stones these stones are fixed in the periphery of the tool by uh, and are spring loaded radially and the spring loaded radially that means the distance uh, can be the diameter of the hone can be adjusted according to the requirement of the diameter of the hole and can be fixed so this hone tool is rotated and reciprocated inside the hole it is i am talking about hole because um, mainly uh, honing is done to finish a hole it can also be used for surface finishing but mainly it is used for finishing a hole properly and as i have said this hone stones the hones or the stones are fitted at the periphery of the honing tool and are spring loaded <clears throat> so that it can adjust the diameter of the workpiece and uh, these abrasive stones remove material in minute quantity and properly finishes the hole now since it is radially adjustable so it can correct any kind of uh, slight amount of axial distortion uh, any kind of taperness all these things can be corrected by this uh, process we use a cutting fluid obviously uh, just like any in, in, in any other machining processes or in grinding processes cutting fluids are also used to remove the chips and to keep the temperature low the honing pressure varies from 1 to 3 megapascal uh, <coughs> it has two universal joints as are shown here and it can adjust accordingly to the hole 
and therefore it allows the tool to follow a predetermined hole axis. The grains of the silicon carbide or aluminum oxide normally varies from 30 to 600 grid size and uh, obviously you will be selecting a <coughs> higher grid number if you want to achieve better finish. And the amount of volume of material removed is normally less than 0.5 mm. Not volume, the stock uh, removed is should be less than 0.5 mm. And the surface, if you watch it under microscope, this type of uh, cross hatched pattern will may be observed. An example is the finishing of automobile crankshaft channels by honing process is very frequently used. It can be done manually or it can be mounted on a machine. Normally it is mounted on a machine, the honing tool is rotated and reciprocated. Just like a drilling tool uh, or drilling machine rather, uh, the honing tool is rotated and reciprocated. So it is rotating, these are the stones or hones, the hones are rotated by this mandrel and is reciprocated also. Okay, so we have come to the next finishing process which is lapping. Uh, lapping is also a finishing process. It is also used to correct extreme, uh, uh, extremely small amount of error in the dimensions, minor imperfections in shape and refinement of surface finish. This is mainly done uh, when you want two components to mate properly. When you want two components to mate properly like a, let's say a hole and a shaft uh, to mating uh, surfaces. For those type of applications, lapping is normally done. Lapping can be done on a flat surface, produce a very smooth flat surface. Lapping can be done to produce a very smooth hole. So, and normally when you are machining a flat, in a, doing in a flat surface, you will be moving in an 8 pattern. You will go like this and come back in like this. So the lapping is done in 8 pattern. And unlike grinding processes, here we use a fluid which carries the abrasives. Which carries the abrasives. And a tool that is used is called lapping tool or lap or lapping shoe. This lapping shoe is normally made of a certain material, softer material. It can be, it can be cast iron, uh, copper, brass, lead or soft steel. So first we do is what you call charging. This fluid which contains the abrasives, the abrasives may be aluminum oxide, silicon carbide, coranda, many other abrasives are available. Let's see. Mm, Iron oxide, corundum, chromium oxide, etc. MRE, all these are mixed with oils or special paste which acts as a carrier and the lapping shoe or quill is rubbed over it. This is called charging, charging of the lap. Once it is charged, so frequently it has to be charged because it may lose the charge and it has to be charged and then again brought in contact with the workpiece and moved in a 8 pattern, moved in a 8 pattern. Now it can be done manually or it can be done in a machine. So <coughs> now how the material is actually removed, the mechanism of material removal. So there are two mechanisms which are uh, popular uh, and uh, both can be considered to be uh, playing a major role in removing the material. So in the first mechanism is the abrasive particles which roll and slide between the lap and the work and with a very small cut occurring on both surfaces. In the second mechanism, uh, the abrasive become embedded because during charging, this abrasive becomes embedded to the lap and <coughs> lap surface and the cutting action is very similar to that of grinding. Now it has been said that maybe in lapping, uh, the material removal actually occurs by combination of these two and in some cases, one is predominant, in some cases, the other is predominant. Particularly when you are using a hard lap, 
the first mechanism is predominant particularly when you're machining with a soft and ductile lap then the second mechanism is much much more predominant different kinds of lapping machines are vertical axis lapping machine centerless lapping machine abrasive belt lapping machine okay the next process is called buffing buffing is very similar to that of polishing here we have a buffing wheel and this wheel contains a very soft material like uh, leather felt or cotton and we press a buff buffing paste this buffing paste consists of abrasive fine abrasive particles in waxes or greases uh, mixed with greases and turpentine or kerosene oil this mix is pressed against the wheel and rotated the wheel is rotated so the wheel will pick up the abrasives along with the paste okay so this will be doing frequently uh, <clears throat> as soon as the abrasives loses their softness and once this is done it's something like charging the wheel basically just like charging the lap now once you do it the workpiece is pressed against the rotating wheel the not only the speed of the wheel is around 2400 to around 5200 meter per minute again the speed depends on the type of workpiece you are machining so for ductile materials or soft materials the speed may be high for harder materials the speed may be low it, this is a thumb rule different types of abrasives that are used are aluminium oxide green chromium oxide MRE, crystalline silica, tripoly, pumice, amorphous silica, etc. etc. But nowadays, only you use industrial grade uh, abrasives like aluminium oxide, silicon carbide, etc. A very fine. So, it is abrasive is mixed with a binder and applied in the buffing wheel. And the paste consists of wax mixed with grease, paraffin, and kerosene or turpentine. Then we have Super finishing. Super finishing is a process which looks very similar to that of a honing process where you use a stone made of abrasives just like a honing process. However, certain and <coughs> frequently used for super finishing of round or cylindrical parts. So this is called cylindrical micro honing and this is centerless micro honing. Here we don't we are not holding the workpiece between centers, that is why it is called centerless. There are two support rules which are rotating this workpiece and the this super finishing tool is reciprocating so what are the difference between honing and super finishing in super finishing the strokes are much shorter around 5 mm maximum the frequencies are also high that means <coughs> it is up to around 1500 strokes per minute pressures are also very low compared to that of a honing the workpiece speed are lower 15 meter per minute or less the grid size are generally smaller than that of a honing so these are the difference between super finishing and honing and lastly we have electro polishing it's just like electroplating it is mainly used for dewaring and removing a small uh, error in the surface or achieving a very good surface finish so it is a, chem it's a chemical process electrochemical process where the electrolyte attacks the projections and the peaks uh, on the work surface and uh, at higher rate and at a higher rate than the, the rest of the workpiece thus producing a very smooth surface Electro electropolishing is frequently used for any kind of rewiring operations so that's it we have discussed different kinds of finishing operations there are other finishing operations um, particularly <coughs> magnetic type of finishing operations which we have not discussed here but those are also frequently used in industry these are the most popular ones that i have discussed so thank you for watching this video if you have any doubt please contact me or put in the comment box i will try to respond thank you